Oh, yeah, go ahead, turn at it on. Get, at least get Tim's presentation because that's going to be the best part of the night. Got to make sure we get that. No pressure. Wait, I, wait, I'm doing a presentation? No. <laughs> oh, just a couple of slides. I mean, you could just tell us what Tweet Me stands for, how you got that license plate, that kind of thing, you know? Oh, it all almost got me to the Super Bowl. What? By Mercedes Benz, but lost out on it. <laughs> I was one of the finalists, so. Wow. That's a good story. Well, so just real quick curious. for every for everyone that's on. Oh, good. Chris Howard's here. Chris and Christy, Christy love it. Hey. You're, hey, Chris and Christy. So let me tell you guys how uh, what's going to happen. Uh, and we're going to start in like two minutes. Um, I'm going to just so do some opening remarks. Going to pass it over to Barb. Barb is going to pass it to Chris and Christy. Then over to uh, Caroline. And then each of you guys that are on right now uh, are going to say a few words to Tim just a few to keep the ball rolling. And then Tim is going to talk. And then for those latecomers, uh, at the end, uh, we're going to do the same thing, another around the horn. And the way I'm doing around the horn uh, is basically, I don't know what everyone else's screen looks like. I'm gonna go from like Joyce, Jeannie, Amy, Dwyer, Gordon, uh, obviously the Chris and Chrissy are already gone, uh, Adrian, Terry, that type of thing. So let's wait until uh, I'm going to wait for one more minute. And then uh, actually, you know, we don't even have to wait uh, one minute because we could start with uh, actually, let's do the opening. Let's, let's have the folks and Joyce, I'm not going to put you on the spot or anything, but uh, you're going to go first saying hi to Tim. Okay. Do you want me to go now? Yeah. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's make it a little more interesting. Why don't you, again, it's got to be sort of quick because they're, you know, we have over a hundred registered. We're not sure how many people are going to come. Um, why don't you give um, a fun Tim story in under a minute and a half? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So my name is Joyce Sullivan. Um, I connected with Tim many years ago when he was at HuffPo. And uh, from that was part of community manager, South by Southwest. So I don't know if it's a fun story, but certainly when I was at South by Southwest and Tim was there and I was part of the um, community manager manifesto creation. Um, so that was great fun. And I met amazing people because of Tim. And, and Tim, as you know, I haven't reached out to you. I've just, it's been hard, but um, I wanted to be here tonight to support you. Um, and I remember walking from Ten the seconds. University of Austin uh, back with you up and down those hills and you had flip-flops on. I thought, how can he walk in those flip-flops? That's why I live in Tampa now. <laughs> okay. That's my story. Thanks, thanks. Joyce. Uh, over to you, Jeannie. You'd think after a year we would have mastered unmuting. Um, <laughs> so I was on the board of this social media club Chicago with all you fine people, including Tim. And one of the things that I think we all know about Tim is he's just this like learner. He just wants to know everything about everything. And we were literally on a panel together. And I remember talking about customer experience and then like in the middle of somebody else asking a question, he literally turned to me and said, you just changed my mind about everything. And I'm going to use that term from now on. <laughs> and I was like, that was easy and quick. So I wish more people were like Tim because he just has so much curiosity and he's willing to put himself out there in so many great ways. So I'm here to support you too, Tim. And here we are. Oh, thank you. Thank you and Jeannie. Never, never, never afraid of embarrassing myself by putting myself out there either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jeannie. Amy, Amy Newman. Sure. So I think I know Tim most recently and best through No Kid Hungry National Social Council. And I would say that um, I'm here to support him because he's always very positive and funny and finds humor in every situation and just very uplifting. I would um, echo the curiosity sent sentiment um, and just it just makes anything seem fun, even when there's maybe a challenge that people have to be part of that is uh, takes a little bit of effort. It just the way he talks about it makes it seem like it's the most fun thing ever. And why wouldn't you want to be part of it? So I really enjoy that about Tim. Oh, 
Thank, Thank you, you Amy. Amy. Hello, Newman. Um, let's and you know what I should let Tim say a little comment after everyone talks as well. Back to you, Tim. No, thank you. And I always say when you are looking for volunteers, never make it feel like work because then it, they want to be compensated for it. So always make it fun. <laughs> and if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, while uh, Mike is preparing his comments, uh, maybe uh, our hostess with the most is uh, uh, Caroline Jones could post the link in the chat for the fundraising uh, aspect of tonight. Thank you, Caroline. And for you those of you that just up. are, thank you. For those of you that are just joining us both on Clubhouse as well as uh, on this Zoom call, um, we're going around the horn. Uh, people are saying a couple of comments about Tim very, very briefly. And, um, and then Tim is gonna give his presentation. So over to my main man, Mike Dwyer. Didn't come to the reunion, but shows up for uh, Tim, which is just as good, it doesn't matter. <laughs> My mic. Thanks for taking some time. Let's get this stage. <laughs> Let's do it right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Tim McDonald, I met you when you were like 10 plus years ago when you were just getting into social media. I think you've been real estate or something, right? Beforehand. Yep. And, you know, you just, you'd start talking and I was like, where the hell is this guy going with this thing? And then you, all of a sudden you just would you come, you, it would make perfect sense. And I'd be like, God, he's just so insightful. You're such a positive person. You're a positive force in this world. And we need more of that. Um, 2020 kind of sucked, uh, really sucked. But, you know, you're that shining light out there, Tim. And I remember uh, I went to New York one time for social media week, I think it was in New York, because uh, the, the Twitter movie we done was playing there. And I went to uh, I went to HuffPo, and I you you brought me in, walked me around. I watched people broadcasting, and I thought you were basically famous. And uh, I was like very impressed with how you constantly reimagine yourself and do all these amazing adventures, you know, and um, do things that you typically think that people only do in their twenties. And here you were just you know just gallivanting around the country, just spreading cheer and positivity. So. I love you, buddy, and uh, I'm so grateful for you and, uh, you know, here to support in any way I can. Well, thank Thanks, you. Mike. And one of my favorite things to do when I was at HuffPost was give tours, and I'll never forget when Snoop Dogg was in there, and I can verify that he smokes wherever he goes, and I was bringing some suit people down, <laughs> and the lobby smelled like pot. It was hilarious. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Adrian. Go for it. You're unmuted. Uh, great. Wonderful. Um, much like everyone, my first uh, introduction to Tim was online. It was actually through um, a Sprout social thing, I believe. And instantly, I could tell he was a heart-centered leader, and I'm really drawn to those folks. Um, it was actually Tim that got me introduced to the No Kid Hungry um, org that is uh, something I do for fun now, fun and spend my weekends just baking for that org. They're wonderful. Um, but what I really remember about Tim is when the social media conference happened to me in San Diego and I was there, um, he had been following some of the work that I had done. I, I left a corporation starting some uh, nonprofit starving work, but for good. And he uh, offered to interview me uh, for a project he was doing or people who followed their heart. And um, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, I learned a lot from that interview. Um, first of all, that it was the beginning of people starting to notice soft skills and following your heart and that being okay. And, um, and so I'm really grateful for him. And I've continued to watch his work. And if there's anything that Tim does, it's lift up other people. And he's always done that. He's consistently inspiring and there's no bullshit, pardon my French, but there's a lot of that, you know, there's so many hashtag isms and there's a lot of um, lack of, uh, of genuine heart and, and that's never the case with Tim and I'm really grateful for that. And I'm sorry I overtalked. Thank you for that. Thanks, time Adrian. I love that. You remind me of how Adam Grant signed his book, Give and Take, A Rising Tide Lifts All Ships. And another thing that I love saying about my work is we all create ripples. And if I can help others create ripples, it creates a wave and a movement. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. 
And thank you, Adrian. Beautiful words. Stefan Kaplan, you are up next, my friend. Look at that great background. And look at this, look at my background right here. That looks oh very familiar. Coincidence? I no coincidence, no coincidence. <laughs> Unmute myself here. Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, Tim. Long time no see. <laughs> I think it was uh, five days ago, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tim, Tim, uh, Tim, and I go about eight, eight, nine years back to Social Media Weekend um, in New York, and um, we had actually met before Social Media Weekend over a great beer and burgers one day in Jersey City, and um, we got to know each other through our mutual friend and colleague Sri Srinivasan. And, um, you know, it, it was an instant friendship. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say anything any different than anybody else has said. You know, he's Mr. Positivity. Uh, he's taught me a lot about how to be real on social media. I, I was on that path, but Tim only made it even clearer about how to, you know, position oneself and, and work with others and, and open yourself up to helping everybody and anybody, you know, with, with social media. So we've had a, a great, you know, eight years together of knowing each other and, um, you know, just uh, no, there's no coincidence about the photo. I'm so proud to always see that photo there because it speaks to his heart and uh, it's one that I took and uh, one that helped us raise uh, quite a bit of money for Tim recently. So, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to know him. And he just spoke to my class uh, at FIT last week and uh, made them all turn their cameras on. <laughs> <laughs> and if your camera isn't on, I'm going to do that to you when it's your turn, too. So. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Stefan. And it's just been great to, uh, I, I mean, this is like so wonderful seeing people from all different uh, dimensions of my life, I guess I will call it. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Please. And Stefan, for those that don't know, he is a great photographer and has amazing um, prints that he was selling and helped me raise some funds for uh, for my care. So thank you so much for doing that, Stefan. Okay. Send me over that uh, photo uh, behind you, Stefan, uh, <laughs> Jeff Willinger at Outlook. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, my man, Gordon. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Jeff. Um, hi, every yeah, I've known Tim for, I think Tim might have been one of the, um, after I moved back and got into social media, I think Tim was maybe one of the first people I met outside of work. And what, what always struck me about him was that it was just, um, you know, in a field where you're sometimes focused on the, the hard business logical, I, you know, like everyone else, he's very heart centered, very positive. Um, in fact, a couple of years ago, I was going through a rough time and he and I, he just said, Hey, Gordon, let's talk. And we talked, he, he recommended a great book, which I read Tim uncertainty is a great book. Um, and I just wanted to be here to, to, to back him. And I've kind of, one thing 2020 has taught me is to, um, you know, be there for people when they need it, because a lot of times they don't have it. And I just figured Tim was cool to me. So I figured this time I could return the favor. Oh, thank you so much, Gordon. And it's just, it's great to uh, hear just how you can be there in a moment for somebody and what that means. So thank you so much. Great. Over to my other clubhouse friend, Andy, although we haven't been in the same room yet together, uh, <laughs> I see you on there. I just haven't had time, but I will. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Clubhouse bringing us back together. Um, thanks. I don't even know exactly who put this on, but thank you. Who, who, whomever that is. Uh, I'm Andy. I'm in Chicago. Yeah. I, I Tim and I uh, got really excited back in the early days of social media. Like it sounds like a ton of you back um, when I, I think I had more hope for what it could be <laughs> maybe than, than what it has become in, in a lot of ways. Um, but that hope is being renewed. Um, my, I have two, two really strong memories of Tim uh, that, that stand out. Uh, and one was, uh, I had asked him back then, you know, what, what, what is a community manager? And he said, two words, be helpful. I was like, so that's been my definition of community management pretty much ever since. And I always attribute that to Tim. The other is uh, we were doing some work together and we were actually at a conference in DC. Um, we were, we were on the train to the airport and we were like, hey, you want to stop by Arlington Cemetery? <laughs> like neither of us had ever been. 
And it was just this really, uh, you know, I, I, I'll use the term sacred for me, just, just walking around and uh, with Tim, I don't know, that, that to me was a really magical, amazing moment that we shared. And I've carried with that, with, carried that with me ever since. And I'm so, so grateful for everything you bring to the world. You, it's been amplified here uh, uh, quite a bit, and I'm sure we'll hear in more of it, just how, uh, how much you impact people. So thank you. No, thank you, Andy. And and for those that don't know, Andy did mention that I worked with them a little bit. When I was decided to leave real estate and before I got the job at HuffPost, I was rubbing nickels together literally sometimes to make it down to the, the SMC events. And Andy was kind enough to bring me on uh, uh, and help his organization uh, back in the day. So thank you for that. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for those kind words, Andy. Maura McGinn, over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm dialing in from San Francisco. I actually don't know Tim, so we've never met. Um, I just saw your bio just today. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh, I I'm gonna list, you know, tune into this. Um, my background isn't actually, you know, community manager. Um, you know, I spent like 16 years in the alcohol beverage industry. My last job there was a VP of global marketing for Campari. Um, thought I got my dream job, lived on an airplane for three years, um, and then switched over to e-commerce, made that switch um, for Shutterfly. And um, I do kind of feel stuck. So I saw your thing about becoming unstuck. And, Love it. Love and it. I, thought, I thought when I transitioned over, I was going to figure it all out. But I, I kind of feel like I'm back just out of college again, when I was on such a very clear, very clear path, and it was a really rewarding career. And it's weird, I kind of feel like I'm back out of college again, and I still have a long run way to work. So anyway, so I saw your thing and I, um, and I actually sent it to my friend Sachiko, she's in Tokyo, and she might dial in too. I worked with her at Shutterfly. So, so that's uh me. So well, Maura, then, I love that story and I love what brought you here. And I will okay. say, if you ever figure it out, I say, you're not having enough fun. <laughs> I love it. Great. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Maura. Joe Davis, uh, you know, I only let people go if they have a camera on. So Joe, you better, uh, Joe, uh, did Joe leave us? Did I skip? Uh, oh, there he uh, is. There we go. Right, there My camera's is. on. All right, there he is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Hey, um, so my name is Joe Davis. Um, I'm actually the social media manager at HR Block. Um, I joined, because uh, I know Carolyn and Chris, and Christy, and so I saw that they were joining, so I figured I'd come. I don't really have an experience with Tim, so it's, it's nice to meet you. Um, Let's make one happen tonight, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my, my journey with Social Media Club started uh, back in college uh, 10 years ago. And I was uh, involved with Social Media Club in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, I went to the University of Kansas and I helped uh, found the Social Media Club at uh, the University of Kansas. Um, and I still participate in Social Media Club of Kansas City. So um, happy to meet you all. It's good to see Chris and Christy and Carolyn too. So, hey, <laughs> Joe. I, I was going to say it's kind of hard to believe that we probably didn't connect in the past if you were involved in, and started that because I was very I'm, I'm very in surprised. Chicago. I'm very <laughs> right. I, I do have one rule and for social media club events, and this is a big enough one. You have to meet someone new tonight. There you go. It's everybody's Joe homework. Davis is my guy. <laughs> you I have to meet that. someone new. And Newman. All right. Now, you guys, I am super psyched to say hi to the guy with the baddest beard in this entire room. Everyone's looking around, although Adam <laughs> Bells is very nice. Uh, it doesn't compare to the brewmaster. <laughs> Jonathan, my man, great to see you, buddy. Are you still in Milwaukee? Yeah. All right. Yep, Cheers still to Milwaukee. you. Cheers. So, yeah, for anyone that uh, came on a little bit late, we're saying hi to Tim. If you don't know him, Tell a story, what brought you here tonight? Um, and uh, just a lot of love, uh, a lot of compassion, a lot of uh, good times. Right so, on. I know well, we were Tim. Well, you know, I, I met Tim uh, a long time ago. 
Uh, I, I was trying to figure out how many years, Tim, but I just remember it was a long time ago. Um, and, uh, you know, Tim's somebody who taught me a lot early on in what I would call my social com- social media career um, and, and really fired a passion in me for community management, you know, as like a foundation to social media marketing. And uh, early on, Tim, um, I... I I'd met Tim and he was doing uh, my community manager. And so I hung out with him and uh, was helpful where I could be. And, um, you know, and and I met so many amazing people through Tim. You know, it's as I think of Tim, he's like, he's like probably the most super connector that I know. Um, And, you know, Tim, you've you've like, you've, you've helped me make lifelong friends and lifelong connections. And I got the pleasure of working with you, um, at BTC. Um, I was, I was thinking about the, uh, this, um, just kind of like how cool it was to see you in Dallas at summer brand camp, um, it talking about conscious capitalism, uh, back in the day. And, um, you know, when, uh, What I love so much about you, Tim, and I heard you like your laugh is so infectious. Like I heard it a few times here. And and that's what I kind of think of is like, gosh, you know, you're the kind of guy you can have coffee with uh, and, you know, you're going to laugh. Your day is going to be brighter um, and you'll learn something and you might even be connected to somebody new. Um, But I love you, buddy. Well, thank you. And that summer brand camp, I don't know if I can get it too good on this angle, but uh, Jeff Power was there who runs Pangeo Coffee. And I was telling him the story from year after year at summer brand camp and then the impact with Don't Get Hungry. And it says, let the world feel your heartbeat is what he told me. He goes, that's what you're doing is letting the world feel your heartbeat. So I had to put it on my arm. (laughs) So, and Brew was responsible for getting me to that first one. So, (laughs) Love it. Love it. Cheers. All right. You know, before we get to the next one, everyone give me a really big cheesy smile. If you have your cameras on, Leslie. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just take a picture. One, two, three. Oh, great looking group. Thank you. That was a trick to get Terry to turn on her camera. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's go to my buddy, Adam Bell. I know a lot of you don't know Adam, but Adam is just one of those super giving generous, smart, uh, and he helped Caroline with the, uh, with the SMC Global uh, website. So, and we're, we sit on the board sort of uh, together here in LA. I mean, you know, that's another story, but Adam is just a good dude. And I thought I would uh, go ahead and uh, follow everyone else in the baseball cap brigade here. So I've got, I'm from Philly originally, but uh, so I have my Philly's uh, 4th of July cap here, so. <laughs> You're right, I don't know Tim, but uh, like Carolyn said, uh, I'm always interested in meeting new people and stuff. So uh, first time with any from uh, my virtual uh, paradise here in Sherman Oaks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ple- pleasure to meet you. And uh, by the way, Maura, just so you know, I know you're, you're new here too, but uh, we both have something in comparison. Uh, we're, both, we're both in the spirit space. I happen to have a Sherry a tequila company. So there you go. <laughs> cool, thanks Adam. Yeah, and, and Adam, I love that he said that you were a giving person. So I know we already have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's lying. Jeff's lying. <laughs> Let's go over to Vincent. Hey, everybody. Um, t- Tim and I don't, we don't know each other super well, but the tweets go back to 2015 uh, with, with the No Kid Hungry. And I, I want to say it was... Um, Brian uh, Fanzo that introduced us through the No Kid Hungry program and um, was just always a, a big fan of that and tried to tried to support that um, and, and my family too. And, and thankful for, for Tim for making us, us aware and, and, and leading that charge and um, for being really such an inspiration because along with what everyone else here has said already, um, you know, Tim is, is such a genuine guy and um, it's, it's rare. <laughs> it's, it's rare that the, the word genuine gets thrown around a lot um, these days. And I don't think everybody always necessarily deserves to be called that. Um, uh, Tim is one of the, the select few that, that deserves it. And um, I'm just here to support. So good to see everybody and then you too. 
You too, thank, thank you so much for saying that, Vincent. I, I know what you mean about words being overused, and so that really means a lot to me. Thank you. All right, let's go over to Casey. Hey, Casey. Hey there, how's everyone doing? Great, super psyched that you came tonight. Thanks, I'm excited to be here too, and I was, I was late. <laughs> I like ran in at the last minute, um, but super excited to be here. Um, I I would imagine our tweets go back uh, to 2015 as well, if not a little earlier than that. Um, I think I found Tim by way of HuffPost and my community manager back in the day when I was trying to figure the social media thing out. I thought maybe there was a career there, but I had no idea, but I love the sense of community and connecting. Um, I remember being on Twitter in the early days of Twitter uh, and thinking, what, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> and um, found, found connections in there and, and slowly learned the why. Um, and that, that led to my career. Uh, and Tim's been there every step of the way. Uh, it's been fun to kind of watch each other. He's in Tampa, I'm in Orlando. So it's, it's fun to be in the same state. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just been a, a uh, honestly, just like Vincent said, like you're so genuine. You're you're the you're the same as you are on social as as I know you would be in person, uh, and so it's it's been fun. Well, thank you, Casey. And that is one thing I've always told people: if you ever do anything in person, make sure your online presence is like you are in person. Otherwise, people are gonna never believe anything you say in person or online because they don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I think one time back in the day, uh, Barb, if I'm not mistaken, didn't we do a session once, or maybe it was my session, I don't even know, connecting your online brand with your offline brand or something like that. Yeah, we and, did. Uh, very similar. I mean, we all sort of eat our own dog food, as they say. Mm -hmm. And before we get to the next person, I want to point everyone over to the chat. It's right over there for those of you that aren't Zoomers. It's got like the uh, little kind of uh, chat sign. Uh, Caroline just posted some uh, important links. Um, one, if, you let, if you're not a member of Social Media Club, you could join and there's a discount, which is insane. Thank you, Caroline. Tim's uh, friend's Etsy shop, Tim's GoFundMe, uh, my email address, no, um, and then our amazing event that we're doing here in, is it LA or is it a global event, Caroline, the uh, United Airlines one? It is a global event, but what do you know? The first three events of our, our global event of the year have all been Chicago based. So, hey, hey, no Chicago, <laughs> coming back soon. There Hopefully you go. in and person. Thank goodness. Thank goodness but we, we've, everyone. if you've, if you're on our email list, you've probably seen some teasers that this event was coming. I was finally able to get our event up this afternoon. I was trying to get that approval. I was trying to get it out in today's newsletter, but we got it up today and pretty excited. We'll have six people from their social media team talking about their 2020 pivot, uh, some really cool things that they've been working on as an airline that they're all really proud of. Um, it's gonna be great. Free for members, uh, $15 if you're general admission. So we're still keeping it accessible. And if you are a member and you attend live, because I know we all know the game of RSVPing and not showing up, but thank you for showing up tonight. Hey, uh, if you Thanks, show Caroline. up live to this United event, you will get to be, if you're a member, uh, we'll have an exclusive networking session with our speakers immediately following. So I know a lot of us have really missed networking. We love the courses and the webinars, but we really, we miss our people too. So I'm excited that we're able to offer this and um, yeah, be sure to check it out. Just All posted right. today. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, without further ado, over to Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Good to see you. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, a lot of familiar faces in here. So Tim, I don't know when we met. It might've been a Colonel Tribune's tweet up, could have been a Clue Train manifesto related something or other, but what I know is you've always been a helper and you meet new people, you help connect them, you've, you've launched a lot of careers. Well, heck, a whole lot of the folks in this room, at least those that I've met, and I'm pretty sure those that I haven't, uh, do the same. So thanks very much for, for being here. Thanks for all you do. and. 
it's nice to see everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ryan. I, I like to say when COVID hit, I prepared my entire life for COVID. <laughs> I've always been ready to make a change on a on a on a turn of a dime. So I'm like, I was ready for this. <laughs> Hey, for those of you that are just joining us, people are putting in their LinkedIn, their Instagram, all that sort of thing in the chat. Feel free to do that. Um, we are going around the horn. Everyone's saying either Tim Moment or if you don't know Tim, just, you know, uh, thanks for coming. So uh, keeping the show moving because uh, we do have our special guests, Chris and Christy, that are going to say a few words uh, after before Tim speaks and as well as Barb. Haven't forgotten any of you guys. Uh, James. Over to you. Thank you so kindly. Um, I, I'm not sure if I met Tim years ago or not, but I've attended the Kansas City social media uh, breakfasts and luncheons and things like that over many, many years. Not real regular, but I have always appreciated and been fascinated by what this organization represents. And when I saw the... Uh, opportunity come through my email to be a part of this tonight. I just wanted to jump in and show my support and say thanks to Tim for everything he's done. And thank you to the uh, social media club as well. Uh, so thanks. Well, thank you. And it's, so I, I remember when I first got involved with social media club, if you get it, share it was like, I love that phrase. And I still live by that phrase. So <laughs> Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Let's go over to my dear friend who I haven't seen forever, Leslie. Good to have you, Les. I know I say that to everyone, but this time I really mean it. No, I'm just kidding, and you're <laughs> muted, Leslie. <laughs> um, thank you, Jeff. It's so good to see everybody. When I um, heard about this event, I was super excited just because I love Barb, Jeff, Amy, um, all the folks that really, that started Social Media Club in Chicago it was um, before social media was a thing. And um, I work in financial services and everything I learned um, through Social Media Club really helped me develop my career and just um, helped me really develop my work. And more than anything, you know, people ask me a lot lately, like, how do you build community? How do you be a great organization? How do you get people to want to come to your events. And I really feel like Social Media Club Chicago had this special secret sauce that just made you want to come back and connect with people. And it was the people and it was people like Tim creating this community and this, this interlocking web of curiosity and wanting to really know how people are, know who they were, help them in their careers, but also help them personally. Um, and just this personal story about Tim really living up to that community um, when I got married in 2012, Tim reached out to me and, and just really beautiful voicemail left me a really nice message. And um, it's sort of that, what it reminds me of tonight is we're celebrating, you know, life-changing moments, both positive and negative. Um, and the community comes together to support each other in, in those moments. And I think, Tim, your attitude about just taking on cancer um, everything that you're going through and trying to be both inspirational, but really honest about, um, hey, I need the help of my community and, and asking for that help. It's not, not easy to ask for help. And I just admired how you're handling all of this um, with such grace, but also just honesty. Like, hey, today was a hard day. Today was a good day. Um, I just really appreciate you and appreciate you sharing your journey and appreciate how you know, you've reached out to me in the good times and the bad times. So thank you and look forward to meeting other folks tonight who I don't know. And thanks to everybody who's um, put together this whole event. I'm really appreciative. Thank you so much, Leslie. And I, I got to say, you are dead on. I love helping other people, but asking for help is one of my weaknesses. And um, fortunately, the community has come together for me. And it just goes to show when you give that mm -hmm. other people you make an impact in and they show up for you when you don't even have to ask. So thank you. Yes, you always get me. You always get me. I mean, <laughs> come on, you're amazing. It's so good to see you. Thanks for coming today. Hey, thanks for being, thanks for organizing. And let's say hi to Terry. Hey, Terry. Oh, there you go, unmute. Unmute. Hi. Um. Tim, it's nice to meet you because you're supposed to meet somebody new. So you're going to be my new person tonight. Um, 
I received the email and the topic just really intrigued me, um, getting unstuck and facing your fears. And I've been kind of um, going through a lot of stuff. I went back to college and Maura was talking about feeling like she was back in school. Well, I actually spent two years in college getting a degree in digital marketing. So it's been, <laughs> it's been pretty crazy. And now I'm, I'm out and I'm trying to finish writing a book and it's, it's like trying to, it's very hard, very, very hard to do that. So I'm really looking forward to listening to um, what Tim has to say about all that. And nice to see everybody. And thank you for putting this on. Well, I'm so glad you're here, Terry. And I'll talk a little bit more about it. But uh, definitely, I tell people it's like when you go to the gym for the first time after not going for years, it hurts. But the more you go, the easier it gets. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So just so, so everyone knows the order, I'm going to Paula next, Ginny, Stephanie. So you're prepared. Uh, so Paula, over to you. Okay. And for those Hi, of you, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Paula, for those of you that are just joining us, we're going around telling a Tim, uh, we'll call it a Tim Minute, because there's so many of us. Uh, we have two special guests, and we have to hear what Tim is going to say a little bit later. So I love everyone, but the quicker, the better. Uh, my boss says, be brief and be brilliant. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, this Paula. Is, this is like the ultimate Toastmasters table topic in half, because we've only got one minute. I know Tim through the New York Times read along and we talk on the phone and two things come to mind. One is his book about overcoming fear and our conversation about that because you could just tell through a, a quick phone conversation that that was his jam and something he lives and walks. And the second thing is my brother-in-law, as I've told Tim, is going through a very similar thing. And, and he's helped me share some things with my brother-in-law that can hopefully help him, especially the KFG Hashtag KFG, and um, thank you, Tim, for doing that. Thank you for being you. And hi, everybody. It's nice to meet you. I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. And this is how much I don't care about language. KFG, for those of you that don't know, <laughs> in the cancer world, is keep fucking going. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Ginny, your camera's off. Um, but let's skip you for a minute, and let's go to Stephanie. Hey there, Tim. It's so nice to be here and it's so nice to see some other friends here too. Um, I, I've known Tim across sort of different contexts and different times, uh, but I feel like Tim, whenever I see you, it's like always with a wonderful crowd of good energy. And I wanna just say that I think a lot of the reason for that is you. You have amazing energy. It is contagious. You know, listen, in the times of COVID, we don't like to talk about contagious, but your energy and spirit is so beautifully contagious. And I feel like wherever you are, a very good energy crowd follows and is there and is feeling good. Tim, I came to um, community manager UN. <laughs> uh, I, also the picture I have up in my profile, even though I'm not camera ready at the moment, uh, the picture I have up in, the, in my profile, I think was taken by Chris, Chris H's camera at Social Media Club New York City or, or Social Media Camp New York, so whatever, one of those events um, that I have there, the picture of you and me and, and Howard and just so many good times. I feel like, um, you know how baseball players, each one has walk-up music, right? Every time a, a, a batter goes up, uh, he has walk-up music. Tim, I feel like your walk-up music is just, you know, a really happy, upbeat, good song, good tune. And you bring that music with you wherever you go with all your good energy. I feel blessed to know you. And um, also I want to still, I want to know if you still have the purple shoes from your AOL talk. I do still have purple shoes with yellow <laughs> soles. Uh, they're, they're not quite as purple and not quite as yellow, but I do still have them. And the shoelaces are like down to the second uh, eyelet, you know, <laughs> but they're still some of my favorites, but in Florida, I wear my flip-flops all the time <laughs> why not and thank why you not? for always being so welcoming when I visit New York uh, even though it's been a while since I've been up there last but uh, you've always been so kind to me so thank you so much Stephanie well thank you just for being you and you know a lot of people say keep it real keep it real but you really do keep it real thank you cool let's go over to a fellow doodle owner 
Ms. Interactive Amy. What's going on? Even though I'd like on your Twitter profile, you're like, I don't tweet that much anymore. I guess I should do the same thing. I liked it though, Amy. We're always learning from each other. That is so true. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I was off camera for a few minutes when I was um, driving, um, but I'm home now and I'm just so excited um, for this event and to really have this be an ultimate reunion. Um, Tim and I go back to the very early days of Chicago Social Media Club with Barb, Jeff, Jeannie, um, and the gang, but I can't even think about the number of, of events, not only that we attended together, but that we planned together. And you know, um, you know, Tim was always the first to welcome everybody with a smile. Um, so fun to be around um, both as a planner and as a participant. Um, and besides just doing lots of events together in Chicago, um, despite his tweet me license plate, I was able to get him over to Google Plus in the early days of, of Google Plus. Um, and one of the cool things that happened with that was when, um, when Tim was in New York with Huffington Post and I was um, on a work trip to Google and New York, we got to do a meetup, little office tour, and uh, plan some events together that way too. So um, when you have good people around you, they continue to stay around you in your orbit. And I just love being part of Tim's. So thanks for um, bringing us all together again. What you do best? <laughs> well, thank you, Amy. And Amy was at Google in Chicago when I had my first community manager unconference that I hosted, uh, and it was just a dream. And one of my biggest things was I didn't know where to do it. And Amy was so gracious to hook me up at Google, and it made it such a great first experience for that. So thank you so much yeah, for everything. Fun. <laughs> so funny, as uh, as one of the co-founders, I was always looking for space, and I definitely did not give Le any time I would call Leslie up. She knew it wasn't really about, you know, selling technology services. It was like, hey, is there any way we could get your space for fill in the blank? And lastly, always yes. And then my next call was to Ramon. Hey, Ramon, we've got 100 people registered. Can you get us some pizza? So for those of you that are in Chicago, if you're not, if you're in Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not in Chicago, that was like our thing. Leslie, I think you still work at Morningstar and they have fabulous space. I don't know if anyone's ever going to go back in the office, but at the time it was amazing space, still is, I'm sure. And then I would call our buddy Ramon, who would donate pizzas, Domino's pizzas to us. Uh, you know, people used to treat him the order and this and that. I mean, as they would say, those were the days. <laughs> Sorry, I know you didn't expect me to sing tonight. Um, all right, uh, let's go over to uh, Joyce. Is there another Joyce or? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You know what? Sorry, you, were, you went first. Ellen. I went. Yeah. Yeah, Ellen. Ellen Waldo. Waldau. Hi. I jumped in a little bit late. I realized there is a connection because my son went to school in Chicago and years ago, I think, well, years and years ago, about um, at least seven or eight years ago, somehow I connected with Ramon and uh, he donated pizza to my son's dorm. SAI, the arts, art school. And boy, did that make him big man on campus for a, a short time. And uh, he left Chicago, but uh, sadly he was the, the victim of some pretty serious violence in the city and, and um, is dealing with PTSD and all kinds of awful stuff. But he, he wants to go into advertising of all things. <laughs> so I, I don't know what, but um, what kind of um, encouragement I'm not, gonna, I'm not giving him any more encouragement. He's, he's too old for that, but uh, he went from art school and now he's gonna get work, work on the master's in, in advertising. So, but that was my remote story. I have no idea. I don't know who Jim McDonald is at all. Okay, well, thank you okay. for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's okay. go over to Julia. Good to see you, Julia. Hi, hi guys. Um, no, it was so nice to see Barb. Um, I saw your post on LinkedIn, and that's how I'm. That's how I got to be here. But um, I just realized how many people that I've met um, just by going to social media club events. And um, I know Jeff. I you know we've been part of BMA together, ANA together, and Amy. It's so good to see you. Uh, um, and just uh, everyone. Um, I don't think we've had a lot of interactions, Tim, but you were always at those events and I, I know, like I know your face. So uh, it's good to see you. I hope you're 
um, doing well and um, just really happy to be here and, and just part of this community. It's yeah, it's meant a lot. So um, that's, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Thank you Good so much, you. Julia. It was the same thing. I had the same feeling of like, I know that face. <laughs> I know you know the next face. He's been patiently waiting. Howard, what's up, buddy? I know someone's talking to him now. He's finally on. My wife was uh, was checking in as well. She and I and Tim and Lori went out to dinner a couple of years ago. And when Tim lived up here near me, she's saying hi. And hi, Tim. Tim, hey. man, I love this guy. Um, Tim was a guest lecturer when I taught social media at NYU and at Columbia. He let us bring an entire class of students to HuffPost and show the studios and all the things. I mean, I met Tim when I needed some help and I asked, I think Chris and Christy, uh, I was doing a social media project and they're like, why don't you ask Barbara? And I think Barbara said, why don't you call Tim? I bet you he would do some stuff. And Tim and I started working together remotely and I done a bunch of consulting and hired Tim for a bunch of projects. and. Um, drove him home from a million social media club meetings in New York City because uh, we were pretty close to being neighbors and uh, it was a real quick, easy uh, drop off. And I just, you know, I, I love you. I love following you online. And I just admire the hell out of how brave and awesome you are on this journey. And uh, just much respect. Oh, thank you so much, Howard. And it was just so great to know what kind of a relationship both personal and work you can have without ever meeting in person and then when you meet in person i used to say meeting online was like the handshake and meeting in person was the hug um we're still waiting for a lot of hugs to come so. <laughs> i can't wait so my screen got a little bit backwards i'm gonna have to go by memory now i've been drinking a little bit and the edible is kicking in so uh uh william bells although you have an avatar up. You look like a nice enough guy. If you want to say hi to Tim. William is on our global board of directors. Oh. Hi, William. Okay. If he does it on, or he, yeah, we can come back if you okay. want. So we'll come back to him. Yeah, uh, I have my Bluetooth on, so I don't know if you could hear me or not before. Yes. I just wanted to say hi to everyone. Um, it's really great to be a part of this, and thanks, Tim, for also joining us and being here with us tonight. And um, I don't know Tim, but i um, very happy to be here. And I did watch actually um, the podcast. It was um, from about a month ago on YouTube, but I found the link somewhere when I was poking around either on your social media or um, somewhere else just from searching. <laughs> but I came up with the, um, it was the virtual campfire. It was um, hiking my feelings podcast uh, oh, or yeah. Yeah. The YouTube channel and I really like felt a cool connection I was like I enjoyed um, your discussion on that program so I just wanted to be here tonight just to show support and just be a part of it that's all <laughs> oh thank you so much I when you said you found something on YouTube I'm like oh which one? <laughs> <laughs> as many people have said I'm into so many different things I'm like oh which one was oh, it <laughs> I remember that one time in the back of the cab in New York City <laughs> this show is PG-13 guys take it easy <laughs> uh let's see I don't see a lot of cameras on Betty pinged me and Betty wants to say a couple of words even though her camera's not on um, it is great seeing all these uh, friendly faces, whether they're in Chicago or they've moved on from Chicago to different places. My um, thought on Tim is, how does he do it? How does he make things happen the way he does? It's um, just awesome and amazing. Um, it, I was just so impressed really specifically with, you left Chicago for Hunt Huffington Post and it's like, wow, that is very impressive. And you keep doing stuff like that. You keep impressing the pants off of all of us. Whoa, Thank whoa. Gotcha. <laughs> Just don't stand up when you're on camera. No. <laughs> um, thank you for that. Uh, I'm not gonna, Ellie, uh, are you around? Usually people, if their camera's on, Ellie, Nicole, if you guys wanna turn, Audrey, if you guys wanna turn on your camera, and my fellow board members in uh, LA, I see that Madeline is on and Rebecca. If you guys wanna say hi, turn on your cameras. If not, we're gonna move on. Oh, 
Madeline, you're you are awesome. Madeline is one of our board members in LA. We're actually having a happy hour tomorrow, just in case you can't get enough of me tonight. I'm doing the same thing tomorrow. Never well. enough. Never enough. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madeline, uh, I just want to say hi. Yeah, this is such a great community. So thank you for letting me be a part of it. And this is an awesome event. I'm in the office, so hence I have the mask on. But hello, everybody. Love it. Love it. She's our, uh, she works at the aquarium and she is very fond of otters. I am. It's hard not Madeline, to Madeline, were you on our TikTok event or were you on our nonprofit event? Um, I was in the, the feel good nonprofit. Uh, That's story. what it was. Yeah, that was me. Oh, yay. <laughs> if, if any of you attended that, that was wonderful. Teddy wants to talk, but you'll never, you don't understand them. He's a uh, different language. Um, Ellie, good to see you. You're up next. Hi, everyone. Um, so good to see you. Sorry, I was late. I had to put a baby down um, for the night, but um, hope well, that's everybody- good. It's just for the night. Yeah, well, let's hope. I don't know. Um, <laughs> hope everybody is well, but most importantly, Tim, I love you. You're a rock star. You're one of the first people I ever met, I think, in Chicago and through a social media club and we know the love and passion that you have for the world and sharing um, ser sharing all about social and just being a good networker. And so um, wishing you continued journeys as you have been doing and rocking out as you are. And thanks for, for being here. This is really a special event and good wow. to see all these faces that are celebrating <laughs> you. Well, thank you so much, Ellie. I, I, you know, it's kind of funny. I always remember um, a lot of people, because I'm in my 50s, always tell, you know, told me when I was involved with social media in Chicago and then at HuffPost, we had a very young workforce and they're always like, what do you have in common with all these young people? And I said, <laughs> because I think we're all driven by purpose and we all have a curiosity for learning still. And you are one of those people, Ellie. So thank you. <laughs> of course, thank you. Let's go over to Barb and then Chris and Christy, and then our star of the evening, Tim. And then at the end, after Tim is done, we're gonna do the same thing if people, we'll go around really fast if people wanna say hi again. So uh, Barb, Chris and Christy, Tim. Okay, well, hello from Charlotte, North Carolina. I miss Chicago so much, but you know, um, am I getting an echo? Me? All right, hold on, hold on. Better now. I took care of it. I think Mary Kay's uh, uh, was getting some feedback, so I muted her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mary better? Kay. <laughs> well, you know, there's nothing like starting with an entrance there. So um, anyway, it's great to see everybody. I do miss Chicago. And boy, there are so many memories of Tim and working with you on Social Media Club. I really don't know where to start, but I feel privileged because I got to know you behind the scenes. And I know a lot of people know you and you're authentic. You're always everybody's best friend. That's what I love about you. But boy, when there's a lot of pressure and things start falling apart as they kind of do sometimes behind the scenes at big events, you always laughed and we always found a way around it. And we had such a great team. I just, honestly, this team is probably the best team I've ever worked with anywhere. And I just love you all for that. And Tim, I just so enjoyed watching what you did with community managers, because honestly, they're the unsung heroes. They're the ones who are on the front lines. And it took people a long time to figure out how important they were. So I think you really did a lot to lift those folks up and raise importance around how important it is to have a community, a community manager. So thank you for that. And I want to thank Caroline and Social Media Global for putting this together. And then Chris and Christy, when you, I, I saw you at Blog World in Vegas and you asked me if I would put a stake in the ground for Social Media Club Chicago. So I had an event in Vegas and only one person showed up. Nobody from Chicago came, but somebody from San Francisco did. That was it. And I didn't think it was ever going to go anywhere. And I came back and we had one event and look at where it, it went. It just took off like fire. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. Thank you for coming to all the events. I don't know. I sit back some days and I wonder, did we even know how much fun we were having? I think we kind of sort of did. But now looking at those pictures, it, it was really, really incredibly special. And it's so incredibly special to be with you here tonight. And Tim, once again, you're gathering us all together. And I just love you for that. So thank you. 
Barb, you just made me well up again. That's two times tonight. Leslie first and now you. I know. I have a box of Kleenexes because I miss you guys so much. So um, let, let's go over to Chris and Christy. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, first. You want to go? I do, actually. Are you sure? Um, yeah. I was going to okay, say, she's age, gonna go. age before beauty. Also, you know, international. She goes women's. twice for that. That's right. I do. Oh. Anyways. Hi, guys. Um, it's. Christy Wells, Chris Heuer, uh, founders of Social Media Club. Um, first, I just wanna, Tim, I'm gonna get to you cause I love you and I, I promise to give you your dues. But first I just wanna say how amazing it is to see Chicago, Kansas City, Lawrence, you've got LA, you've got Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you got Ronnie from Sacramento, you know, you got Carolyn up there in Des Moines. I mean, it's just, it's, it's New really York. amazing. Oh, sorry, God, Howard, I'm sorry, Howard, New York. Love you, I love you. Um, sorry, I couldn't see you in the, sorry. Anyways, I'm, I feel blessed that this community comes together for moments like this and that it's all because of literally thousand people, thousands of people around the world like Barbara and Jeff and Tim and Howard and Ronnie and Jonathan and everybody. Um, you know, just putting your time and energy into this idea of getting people together and sharing what you know and, um, you know, helping to advance literacy and just good ideas and just even getting like expanding your own personal network. So I feel forever grateful that you guys believed in it. Barbara, thank you for starting Chicago. <laughs> and it's like you said, it, you know, whoever shows is the right people to show. So um, but the Chicago community specifically, uh, specifically coming up tonight too, is just, it's brilliant to see. So thank you guys for that. Um, moving over to Mr. McDonald, um, there's a lot that has been said tonight that I really, I probably can't say much more. Chris has, he's much better with words than I am, but I'm just going to say when it comes to building community, sharing your heart, sharing your knowledge, opening up, you know, your arms, to just embrace anybody who walks into the room to make them feel special, make them feel welcome and just really want to be part of an organization. And I'm just forever blessed that you've come into my life in that respect. Um, I, I mean, the last memory I have of us in person, and it's probably not the last time, but actually Brewer and you were in San Francisco, I think at a community event um, and a little yeah. tiny space. And it just, it's, it's so funny. Like I didn't remember that until I just actually saw Jonathan in the screen. I'm like, oh my God, that's right. Um, so I, I love that there's moments like that in our lifetime that we're gonna always be able to think back to and just think, oh my, we had beers, it was so amazing. And for that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to the person who actually speaks. No, a little more eloquently, but I just want to say, I love you. I actually love, even if I don't know you, I love all you guys because you guys are all part of Social Media Club in some way or manner. For those who led chapters and did that that work, God bless you, especially Ramon and all the pizzas that he delivered, um, amazing as well. And so I just, uh, for that, I just want to say thank you guys. Hi. <laughs> um, gosh. Tim really embodies the spirit of what it was that I was hoping to create and to amplify in the world. Uh, for those of you who don't know the, the real origin story is behind it all. Um, social media was a means to an end. It wasn't really the focus at the beginning. It was a matter of seeing the need for people to come together and support each other and to grow and to create these sorts of communities that we've been able to highlight and celebrate here tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, the post that I wrote for Blog World Orlando 2006 was basically like, hey, if we don't get our shit together and figure out how to come together and see our common humanity and start connecting on that level, this shit's gonna fall apart. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, some of that has proven itself true, um, but, this is a very unique opportunity uh, to look at this. And, and Tim, I, I couldn't help but say like, this is the best memorial service I've ever been to for somebody who really deserves to hear these words of the impact you've created yourself from the voices of the people you've impacted. Uh, you've just touched so many people in so many different communities. We've had several Johnny Appleseed type people who helped to grow social media club around the world. Oh gosh, people like Dave Evans down in Texas, but like Tim, you're, you're right up there with them. You're one of the few people I think who knows so many people across so many different chapters really around the world. Uh, although of course, Chicago, New York and, and you know more local to the US being more prominent to it. 
Um, but, but I got a couple of things I want to say really importantly about what Tim represents and what he has lived and what that means for society as a result of him willing to be his full authentic self, to live that genuinely and vulnerably, and to give not only knowledge to other people like KFG and how to share other people's or how to how to share his own journey to help other people, um, regardless of what energy it's taken from him at the time. Um, and you know, there is this sort of thing that we've talked about a lot over the years that uh, karma is absolutely real. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't always pay on demand. Um, and I, I don't know that this is karma so much as it is a chance for all of us to step up and do something to support you. So that's where I wanna, wanna turn here for a moment before one last closing thought. And that's that I really hate that things like GoFundMe to pay for bills like this has to exist. But I'm really glad that people like Tim who really deserve the help for all he has put out into the world and all he has created has a chance to have people like Barb and Jeff and Caroline and others put together something like this to enable us to make his life a little bit easier in exchange for all the ways he's made our lives better. And he is an old soul. Um, he is the sort of person I have in mind when I think of if you get it, share it. But that first part is really important too. It's not just being helpful. It's not just sharing. It's actually getting it. It's actually having this old soul that has matured to the point of seeing what is the real point of us living, the real point of us connecting, and the real opportunity for what we can do together. And Tim has embodied that in so many different ways. Um, I just wish that there could be more people like Tim in the world. And Tim, I'm forever grateful for your friendship and all the great meals and conversations and insights we've shared. And, you know, across the country, uh, actually, as it might be. Um, and just thank you. And, and thank you all. And thank you to my hometown of Chicago for doing such a great job in bringing Social Media Club to such extraordinary heights. Thank you all. Chris, I'm telling you, I freaking wish I could jump through this camera and give you a big freaking hug, dude. It is so good. Thank you, Christy. It is so good to see you. Eloquent as anything. Rock star haircut. Chris and I, uh, back in the day, used to have four square competition. I know Tim and Brewer, you guys were in and Dwyer to a certain extent, but I remember you were visiting Chicago and I was checking in freaking everywhere. And you everywhere were, I went. <laughs> right, you were losing your shit. It was hilarious. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that fun story up. Your point, cheer point, cheer point. Oh, I'm sorry, we weren't supposed there to say that anymore. I know, right, that means you got a drink. I, before I turn it over to Tim, I haven't really told a fun Tim story, but of course, you know, twin brother from a different mother. We really did used to look alike a little bit, especially if you had enough of these. Um, I, I don't know, so many, but probably my favorite because it changed my life a little bit was meeting Kevin Bacon with you at South by Southwest. You were able to bring one friend with you. And now, of course, everyone in this room is one degree away from him, thanks to you. And now, of course, me. But uh it was very special. I mean, you know, meeting you in New York, you know, just everything with you, Yankees game. I mean, anyway, uh, I just want to, again, uh, just so everyone knows, uh, Mr. Administrative tonight, Tim's going to speak, and then there's going to be time for people to uh, uh, chime in at the end. Uh, Tim, I mean, I'm so glad that I was able to get this together for you. <sighs> I mean, I can't even talk. I mean, just... Take it away, share your screen, just talk, whatever you want to do, I'm as long as you want to do I'm it. I'm just sharing me. I don't need to share a screen or anything. I'm not going to bore people with slides. Um, <laughs> and I don't even, uh, you know, and, and this just goes to show, I think, when Jeff mentioned that he got to meet Kevin Bacon, it's because they reached out to me because I worked at HuffPost, even though I was director of community, I wasn't a writer or editor or anything like that to interview him. And, um, we kept getting pushed back to schedule and they wanted me to get in the back of the limousine with Kevin Bacon to interview him on the way to his next thing. And I said, is there room for my friend? And they said, no. And I said, well, then I can't do it. And they actually waited and 
for the limousine so we could do it right at the Mashable house and Jeff got to stay there and and be with us so um, that's like what it means to have a friendship is you don't put yourself in front of other people you put them right up there with you and so um, just an example of what true giving is all about it's giving of yourself before you you uh, you know give to others so um, but that being said, I, you know, there's so much I can talk about. And, you know, one of the things, and I've heard a couple of people mention that don't know me that well, this thing about being, you know, getting unstuck um, was what brought you here today. And I think my whole journey on learning that I had stage four colon cancer that metastasized to my liver back in uh, late November of last year uh, was kind of a shock. Um, but the way that I reacted to it, as I look back now, all started back when I really got involved with Social Media Club. And I remember when I first went, I had mentioned to somebody how I really didn't have too much money at that time. I mean, when I say not a lot of money, I remember literally one Social Media Club event because I lived in the suburbs. I didn't live in the city. I had to take the train in and I had enough uh, money to pay for the train ticket to get to the city, but not back from the city. And I still was committed to going, but I just figured I'd have to end up borrowing, you know, 10 bucks from somebody to get back if I, if I, you know, didn't make it. Well, for some reason, the conductor didn't come by and punch my ticket on the way into the city and I didn't have to get it on the way back. <laughs> but in those days, I couldn't even afford to go to these events, even if it was only 10 or 15 or $20 to go. And the one thing that I learned early on was if you really wanted to go to an event, if you really wanted to expose yourself to a new industry, new people, is you could always reach out to the organizer and ask how you could help out because everybody's always looking for volunteers. And with Social Media Club, it was, um, I remember back before the days where we realized that um, DRAM insurance was so important uh, for you know, giving out alcohol at events um, that we actually had volunteers that worked the beer keg. And what a perfect place to be at an event than other at the beer keg where you got to pour everybody's beer and you had about 30 to 45 seconds to have a conversation with almost everybody that came up to you. And you became their best friend. You were their bartender. You, you were, you know, getting to know everything about them. And the more that you poured them, the more you got to know about them. <laughs> um, but then after that, I remember that um, they they threw out a call for, uh, they were forming a communications committee. And, you know, I, I think Barb and Amy and Jeff, you guys remember this, it was probably like 13 of us on the first call. There was like three of us on the second call. And then there was just me left on the third call. <laughs> and I quickly took on that director of communications role. Um, and that's what led me to start understanding that you know, what I was doing was much more than communications. It was wearing a lot of different hats. And that's when I started hearing the phrase community manager. And I started questioning myself and doing some research about what this was. And at that time, back about 10, 12 years ago, it was literally, um, there was apartment community managers, which still exist today. They're the people that live on property and, you know, the super, if you live in New York, right? You know, they're the, they're the super. Um, if you were in a gaming community, there was all these online forums and that's what, um, they were called community managers. They were all volunteers and they were in existence well before we had social media. But then there was like two, two other communities. One was for all these startup community managers because the first hire in a startup back in the day used to be a community manager because they could do just about anything you needed. But that wasn't really what I was doing. And then there was the other one, which was the community roundtable, which still is around today, which back in that day and still is mostly today focused around um, enterprise social networks or internal communications for all the employees. And that really wasn't what I was doing. So I found this void there. And I figured if nobody else was doing it, why didn't I create something that other people could learn from. I was taking what Social Media Club was all about. If you get it, share it. And even though I didn't get it all, even though Chris said that I, I got it before I shared it, I was kind of making it up at that time because I figured the only way to get it was to bring other people that had it together and learn from them, but then be in, do it in a way that was able to share it with other people. 
And, you know, that's, and Amy mentioned Google plus, and, you know, it's so funny, like how all these dots are connecting, you know, as, as I hear and listen to all of you, because, you know, what happened when I got on Google plus is they started having circles and I started realizing that everybody was doing Twitter chats at the time. Everybody was doing this at the time, but nobody was on Google plus. And so I could take my community manager on Google plus and have to have people join the circle in order to be part of the conversations that we were having. And when they came out with Hangouts, we actually did that and used it in a way, it was before Hangouts were on air, so we couldn't record it. We couldn't, li you know, we were just live streaming and then it was done. So we had a saying, whatever happened on Community Manager Hangout stayed on Community Manager Hangout. And um, we actually got written up by SEO Moz because of our use of using Google Plus and Google Hangouts. And all this fascination with, um, with live streaming, with building communities, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I knew it wasn't doing what I was doing. And I remember I posted something on Facebook that was three, it was a Venn diagram, three circles, probably everybody's seen some version of this. They were three yellow circles and one said what you're good at, the other one said what you're passionate about, and the third circle said what pays well. And when they overlapped in the center, obviously it was red, and that said hashtag winning. And I said, I posted that and I said, I'm getting closer to red every day. And one of the people that I had met through these community manager hangouts was the director of community at HuffPost. And he commented, hey, if you're interested, come work at HuffPost, we'll help get you there. And I knew how employee referrals work. So I had told him, I said, well, if you're really serious, you know how to get in touch with me, pick up the phone and call me. Well, he did the next day. And he told me that they were launching this HuffPost Live, which is a live streaming network that needed a community manager. And I was just like, this is my dream job. It had everything Tim written all over it. And it was a big move for me because my wife grew up and lived in Chicago her entire life, had no desire to want to move. And um, I actually went to New York for six months on my own before she moved out there with me. That's how big of a risk it was in my relationship to actually take that job. And, um, but I realized that this is what I wanted to go after. This is what I wanted. And I, I think as I've, you know, as I look at that and, you know, I, I just, I feel like that was one of the first big things I did that was very, had a lot of personal risk involved in me doing that. I just realized that I knew this is what I needed to do. And I realized that if my relationship was strong enough that we would stay together and I made a commitment to her, if it didn't work out after a year, I'd move back. And, um, and she ended up coming out after six months and we had actually both ended up really enjoying our time in New York. Um, but it was all because I trusted myself to make that decision and do that. And, um, I, I know Barb, you mentioned about all the things that could, could go wrong in events. And I think, you know, my involvement with, with social media club really helped me understand that when, you know, kind of like how, um, Dale Carnegie talks in the art of public speaking, the audience only knows what you present to them. And if you don't admit, admit a mistake, if you don't point out your failures or the things that you're concerned about, they never know because it's all in your head, not what you're telling them. And they only know what you're telling them. And so as I started doing my own events, um, it, when, I, when I lived in the suburbs and even in New York, I started realizing that if I had this vision of how this event was supposed to happen, I could either get frustrated and let everybody know that, or I could just embrace what was happening and pretend like it was actually planned and kind of turn it into this fun game of, okay, now what's next? What's going to happen? And I think these are all things that have helped me build my resilience in understanding that I can't control everything that happens in life. What I can control is my reaction to what happens in life. And I think when we look at what happens, you know, in my life, and when I had found out I had cancer, not everybody can have a major moment like that in their life. But I want you to think about the small things that happen, whether you get let go from a job, whether you change jobs, whether you're not sure what's happening, whether you get divorced, whether you're entering into a new relationship. These are all things that are happening that are major moments in your life that you face a, a choice of what you want to do. And 
how you want to react to that. And I think that has all prepared me to understand when I got, when I learned I got cancer, I had a pain in my right side and it got progressively worse over the course of four days. And after the fourth day, I told my wife, I was going to go into the urgent care and I went in and they told me that it kind of felt like it, or, you know, thought based upon my, upon my symptoms that it might be a kidney stone. And so they ordered a CT scan. And the next day on Monday, I went in and got the CT scan. And I had learned that kidney stones and my wife has had kidney stones. If they're really bad, you can get like an ultrasound that kind of breaks it up. You know, um, if they're small, you can either pass them or there's some, you know, medication that you can take. that could actually, you know, kind of disintegrate them and make them easier to pass. Um, and that is what ended up um, making me uh, think that it was just going to be a kidney stone when I went in. And when I came out and I got home, the doctor called and said, hey, can you come back? And I need to talk to you about your results. And I told my wife, I guess they're not writing me a prescription for the kidney stones. And I was laughing at the time when I went out the door. And I, I walked over to the urgent care and he sat me in the room and said, um, you know, I got your results. You have cancer. And those were three words that I never thought I'd hear. My family doesn't have a huge history of cancer. I have an aunt and a grandma who had breast cancer, and that's the only cancer that we've really had in our family, you know, on both my mom and dad's side of the family. And I just looked at them and I put a big smile on my face and I said, okay, what does that mean? And I think that gets to what Chris was talking about the, you know, I like getting things. I like to understand things. And I wanted to figure out what, you know, what I needed to do, what this meant for me. And the doctor was very kind. He had known me from being in there several times before. And basically, I'm not going to go through the whole long story of, of the doctor because you can read about that. But, you know, he got me into, you know, see an oncologist or see a, um, a guy to do a colonoscopy with me. Um, I had that done. He referred me to an oncologist. I, I went to him. I was absorbing so much information and I almost forgot my own rule that I was in control because what I was doing was I was letting all these people, all these thousands of people, um, you know, tell me what they thought I should be doing. And I forgot that, to ask myself what I wanted to be doing. And what I wanted to be doing was spending my energy on healing myself and getting this cancer out of my body. And I couldn't do that if I was focused on listening to thousands of other people and what they thought I should be doing. Now, some of them, I always was appreciative of what everybody told me, but I really wanted to focus on what was important to me. And that led to me understanding that this is a gift, right? This is a gift and an opportunity that I have. Um, you see the shirt I'm wearing, which says, check your colon because now I'm a big proponent to let people know that the common thought is that you should get checked at 50, but the reality is you should be starting to get checked at 45. And if you have a history of colon cancer in your family line, then you should get checked 10 years before the diagnosis date of that person. So it's really been a big thing for me to share my journey for people that are going through this because I have cancer buddies now that I'm able to talk to that have been two years, 10 years into this journey that are, able to understand what I'm going through. And so if I can be there for somebody that's just finding out that they're getting it or what it means to get screened or what it means to learn you have colon cancer, I wanna be there to help them understand what I'm going through. It's not gonna be the same thing that they go through because we're all unique and we're all different, but it, it means so much coming from somebody that actually has something that you do. And I think when you look at life, you always have the opportunity to be able to share right? And you always can go through something and either keep it to yourself. You can decide to, to, you know, point fingers and blame either yourself or your circumstance or other people, or you can just look at it and say, what, what is this giving me? What opportunity is this putting in front of me? And I think that's what, when I was joking earlier about, I spent my entire life preparing for this pandemic. It's because I've always looked at situations and said, what does this mean? What can I create from this instead of putting blame or pointing fingers at anybody and getting resentful at other people? And I think when, um, you know, when Chris called this kind of a memorial, I, I, my wife 
didn't really appreciate this when I first said it, but I said me getting cancer was a gift. And it was a gift because what I hear and what you have all shared here today with me is what most people only get to never hear because it's only said when you're at their funeral. And this is a gift to be able to hear this from each of you, even those, those of you that don't know me, what brought you here together. And if, if you are one of those people that the unstuck part did, just reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about what you're going through and see if I may be able to, you know, help hold your hand through that process. But, you know, more than anything, I want to encourage everybody to, you know, really look at whatever's happening in your life and, deep down inside and this is not easy it's not something that that we can just do like right away but and it, and it hurts sometimes i'm not saying this you know everybody says how i always got a smile and i always got a good personality it doesn't mean that i don't hurt and i don't go through pain because if i don't go through that i don't know what joy is i don't know what happiness is you know i don't want to live a a vanilla life where everything's the same all the time. I want to have those ups and downs, but I am in control of how I react to those ups and downs. And with that, Jeff, I just, I know we're getting close on time and, and I, I'm happy to stick around for a little bit longer, but I just really want to thank, you know, you have been reaching out to me consistently ever since I announced, you know, announced that I had cancer and, you know, what you and Barb did putting this together and, you know, Caroline for agreeing to, you know, make it a global event and to see all the different people that are showing up from, you know, all these different SMC chapters um, from different walks of, of life, you know, I mean, some are coming from people I've met outside of SMC and, and being aware of SMC now because of coming together here. And so I think that this is all just something that I am just so grateful for. And, you know, I'm, I'm so appreciative and, you know, it is very difficult for me to ask for help, but I learned that when you ask for help um, and you've been giving for so long, you will be very surprised by the impact that you've had on so many other people. So Jeff turn it back to you. Wow. Uh, thank you, Tim. That was, and I'll take the spotlight off you so you don't have to, uh, not if you stare at myself on the big yeah. screen. <laughs> figure, well, I'm figuring that out. Uh, I Caroline, uh, I think wanted to say a few words. I yes, think. And I do. And I want to get a quick selfie. I want to bring everyone back up to, uh, Hold on with my captain hat or should I go waffle house? I'm gonna spotlight Tim, but then I'm gonna pin, it took me a minute to do this before, but I wanted to get a selfie with him and Chris and Christy and Jeff and Barb. So one second here. And while Caroline is doing that, there are uh, probably a dozen of you that ping me that wanna say hi to Tim. So as soon as we're done with this and Caroline says whatever she wants to say, oh. I want to hear one more time from Chris and Christy if they want to say something, Barb, and then uh, the folks that are in the crowd that didn't get to say anything yet. God, I'm not even a control freak, but I feel like I am. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get that pin real quick. Here Cheers. we go. I need a quick selfie, everyone. Put on your best smiles. All right. I'm going to take a puzzle. Hold, hold, hold it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. It's safe to say that everybody is here because of you. And I have been so emotional just listening to everybody tonight, the, just the overwhelming amount of people who have come out of the woodwork, who have been involved with Social Media Club in years past, who um, as soon as we said Chris and Christy were coming, we're like, and Tim, oh my gosh, I'm there. <laughs> everybody who has sent multiple, um, Kings and emails, you know, we're, we definitely wanted to make sure that we could all get you here. And just, I love that energy that you wanted to be here so badly. And Tim, we, we all owe you so much gratitude for what you've done to build Social Media Club Chicago, which has in turn built so much for our global organization, Chris and Christy. Wow. I think if Say something in the chat, wave, smile, give an emoji if your career has been dramatically impacted by one of these two. I 
I know it's not just me. And we all have stories of how Social Media Club has changed our lives, our our career, our, our the direction, um, giving us meaning and passion and purpose. Uh, as many of us have kind of alluded to, social media has changed quite a bit in the last few years. But the one thing that has been a constant for me that has been my why is how much Social Media Club has been there for me when I was at you know, my bottom financially, or when I was in between jobs, or when I wasn't sure what I was going to do next, when I was scared. And just showing up to these events, there was always someone who was like, you know what? Oh, I know they're looking for a job. You, everybody just kind of puts you on a list. They, they're looking out for you. They're feeding you projects. They're giving you consulting work. We love to collaborate with each other. And that's what, that, that's the secret sauce to all of this. We love learning our best practices. We love, we can get our employer to pay for it if it's, if we're gonna learn something, but what really brings us all together is the community. And I am just so thankful that we were able to get such a big crowd tonight. Uh, Jeff and Barb, you have been so wonderful throughout all of this, making this so easy to plan it's almost like everybody on this call has like kind of just knows what to do or like jumps in with the settings, just pitches in a hand. And that is just invaluable that that's the energy that we bring to the table. And if you are ever in a position where you are in between jobs, you are right out of school, you are somewhat new to social media club or you haven't been around in a while but you're feeling reactivated tonight we would love to have you back in any capacity whether it's showing up to events getting involved I have a long list of things we always need help with always it could be big or small you know we I was just telling Jeff and Barb earlier I had created a clubhouse club over the weekend I have no desire to manage it if anybody here wants to be part of that we would love to have you. Um, there, there's so many things like our, if you wanna help with Twitter, it, it's not like you have to do it all. I think, at, and as Tim was saying earlier, if it feels like work, people are gonna start wanting to be paid and don't I know that. So uh, <laughs> thank you, um, Adam, William, Ellie from our global board who have done so much. It, it, we all know that our new website relaunch has felt like work. Uh, but it, it has been a joy to get our website out of 2015 and make it working again. And now we can start making it cool and add fun things to it. So it has been so great. Anyway, I went way over a minute, but thank you all for being here. Thanks, Caroline. Uh, appreciate those kind words. Um, just to keep everything moving along, because I know I want to get to a few people uh, uh, Chris and Christy, any, uh, you know, parting words? I mean, we're not ending the event. Other people are talking, but I wanted to get, uh, any reaction from you and then Barb, and then we'll open it up to, uh, some of the folks that have been pinging me nonstop. So following up on, on Tim's comments, everyone kind of probably feels that same sort of way. And, you know, I tried to build a business called Will Someone specifically to solve that, to get more people to learn how to ask for help. And what we discovered was, um, people really aren't good at asking for help. Uh, at least people that I find that have this shared spirit of typically helping others, um, possibly due to our parents and the way we were upraised, but whatever it might be. Um, but I'm going to ask you one more time, if I may, to find a little bit of money. It's in Canadian. So like 50 Canadian will only really cost you like 38 or something. Uh, or if you do like I did, we did uh, $333, but that's because it's an exponential power that I wanted to back him up with, three to the power of three. Uh, and it turned out to be only 283, which was really weird, but like whatever. <laughs> but, but the point being nonetheless, um, please just send him a little bit of money to help him continue to have the peace of mind and spread this great spirit across the land, through the waves, through these intertubes, and uh, to do more of this great work that he's done over the last two decades and beyond. And um, I'm just so glad to see so many other great friends who, who we've had a chance to know over the years. And um, yeah, I'm and so glad you're here and kicking its ass, Tim, yes. more than anything else. I'm so glad to hear that. 
Oh yeah, I guess I should I should just put in because I told people I was diagnosed with cancer. I had my first scan a couple of weeks ago and my couple of the lesions on my liver reduced one almost in half and the other by centimeters, not millimeters. And there's no sign of, of, of the cancer in my colon, but CT scans I've learned don't show everything. They just show the walls. So there still could be cancer in there. But main thing is, it's making progress. And to, and to your point, Chris, it's because I don't have to focus on that financial side of things. I get to focus on my health and my mindset. So thank you. Awesome. Can I do a quick woo? <laughs> woo! <laughs> Woohoo! No, I want, yeah. could I say one thing real quick? Over to you, Absolutely. Stephanie. I wanted to say one thing because um, one of the things I realized by, by helping Tim when I started back in December before Christmas was that, and I thought about this a lot, a lot over the past few months, was there's a lot of ways to try to raise money. And, and especially when a lot of people don't, may not even know Tim, but we each have certain gifts and we each have certain things that we're, you know, that we do in life. Sometimes you can take what you do in life and you can actually really raise so much awareness with that, you know, and that's why when I first tried to figure out how to help and, and, and help our buddy, Tim is I, I, I had to think about it. And I said, you know what, it's, it's gotta be my art because my art appeals to people. So if I take my art, and I open it up to people for whatever they can afford, then, then, you know, it, it should work. And you know what it did, because I got to be honest with you. Um, I'm a social media person. I'm a photographer second these days, but visuals guide my life. And I maybe sold four photos all of last year. And I think I sold 20 to 25 photos in like eight weeks for Tim you know, and, and so it's just the point of that. I wasn't selling that many photos, but it, you know, because I wanted to help a buddy who needed it. Um, people wanted to have art in their home. So it worked a lot better than attaching that cause sometimes to something that had no something tangible, you know, for some people, not for everybody. Hopefully, you know, people will donate anyway, and I encourage people to, but sometimes we can find things in our own lives that we can use to fundraise with, you know? Thanks, Stefan. Can you put your uh, contact info or your Instagram or wherever you sell yeah, your it's all, it's all in the chat. It's all in okay, the chat. Put, put it in again if you haven't done it recently, because there are a number of chats. I know it's a pain, but okay. just do it. No, no, no. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Thank well, you. I was just thinking that maybe I could offer up Christy on a virtual date. Uh, oh. <laughs> She's pretty good at that. <laughs> wow, it's, it's, it's getting warm. dollars <laughs> Anything for you, Tim. Anything for you. <laughs> hey, do uh, some of the folks that are on the uh, phone, I know Audrey, you're out there, Nicole, uh, if you want to turn on your cameras and say hi, I understand that, you know, the Zoom fatigue is real. I've been on this thing for <laughs> a number of hours. Uh, Audrey, Nicole? I will take that silence as I'm getting something to, oh, there's Nicole. Hey, uh, here, let's see. Uh, you have to unmute yourself, Nicole. Hello, everybody. There you go, hey, hey. I just wanna say it's so great to see everybody. I, I feel like this is a reunion. <laughs> um, Tim, I think it's because of you and Sammy Ari that I met everybody in Chicago and um, you know, I was telling um, Jeff earlier over a Facebook chat that um, like it was sold out. So I was like, please, please let me in. <laughs> um, please let me have a ticket. Um, and it's, you know, I, I miss a lot on social media. I kind of checked out over the past year. I went through a lot. Um, so I just want to say that I don't want to get emotional. It's really great to um, hear you say what you what you shared tonight, because I have been going through a lot of transition myself. And my dog wants to go outside, so I've been <laughs> hanging on. Um, but, you know, we all get stuck and then we get stuck again sometimes too. So it takes a lot of effort to get unstuck, not just once, but twice, three times sometimes. So thank you for sharing those words of encouragement and sharing your personal journey with everybody. And um, 
just seeing everybody again tonight encourages me um, because it's very lonely in Ohio. <laughs> And I miss Chicago a lot. So um, thank you all for having me here and, and having this and um, so I could join you all. And um, uh, please keep in touch and keep sharing. That's all I want to say. You know Nicole. I will. And, oh and reach out to me anytime, Nicole, if you want to okay. talk. Thank you. We're going to make it a lot less lonely or in Ohio for her, I think. <laughs> Big virtual hug, Nicole. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow, that was awesome. Uh, anybody else want to, uh, Shaley, I haven't said hi to you yet. Uh, do you want to say hi to uh, Tim, anybody? Uh, come off your camera. <laughs> oh, just sending so much love. I also had to cut out for part of this, but I hope I can listen to your story again. I knew when I saw this, I didn't know till today. And I was like, this is going to be incredible. So I appreciate you laying everything out. Um, it's going to have more impact than probably you ever realize. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shaley. Uh, Marla, you have not said anything that's not Marla-like. Are you around, Marla? Amy? Roger? Karen, who's on the board with me? Rebecca, all the way. Rebecca gets the award for the furthest away. Rebecca is in Sao Paulo. And uh, I know she doesn't like to talk a lot, so. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Jeff, I have a, one more thought I'd like to add, if please, that's okay. Please. So I was thinking about all the events that we did, and I know Tim remembers this one well. It was called Social Media for Social Good. It was TN 2020 with the British Council. And so Jeff was out of town, so Tim and I and the board handled it together. You missed that one. It was good. But we had people from around the world who came and did a Pecha Kucha. So they did a presentation that was very quick about how they were using social media to contribute to social good in the world. It was one of the best events I've ever been to. And I would just, yesterday was International Women's Day and the hashtag was choose to challenge. So I would just like to challenge you all to take this feeling that you have right now and just all the love we have for Tim and just all, all the positive messages here and take social media and use it for social good. And I just want to thank you because this has been one of the best nights I've had in a long time. So thank you. <laughs> mm. Thanks. I, you know, I love, I love that you said that to use it for good because I've always viewed social media as a tool. And just like any tool, we can choose how we use it. And we can use it for good or we can use it for evil. And I choose to use it for good. So that's the way we should what, all use it. What did you just speak to my class about just four, five days ago? <laughs> Right? I, I don't change <laughs> too much. <laughs> That's what I brought you in for, man. <laughs> Anybody else? I like to think we're still glass half full on social media, despite its issues, but. I would agree. <laughs> Anybody else that hasn't said anything yet? Going once, going twice. I'm playing pickleball after this. I don't know about you guys. Uh, Tim, some parting words for everybody. I mean, not parting, but, you know, just for the evening. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I mean, really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, this means so much to me. And, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's something, just to give a little perspective, my chemo treatments that I get every two weeks are $22,000 every two weeks. Now that's not what I need to take out of my pocket. I've been blessed through this whole process. When I put out the request for help for insurance, I had somebody help me with that. Um, so I have really good insurance now um, in, compared to the crappy stuff I had before <laughs> when I got diagnosed. So, I mean, it helps, but that, ex that insurance cost me a shitload of money each month. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, not being able to work now full time and, you know, having all these expenses, but with the insurance and, and the medical bills coming in, it's very challenging and something that I'm so grateful for everybody who's done contributed so far, because what that means is I don't need to spend that energy on the finances. I can focus on getting myself better. So, um, so that I guess is my ask, even though it's really tough for me to share that and, and put it out there. But, um, 
you know, really, even if you're not, I'm not asking anybody that's not in a position to, to, because I've been in your shoes before and I know what it's like, just your support is enough for me. Um, even if it's just words of encouragement. So, um, it's only if you can or enable and in a position to, uh, that I would appreciate it. But otherwise, uh, Jeff and, and Barb, thank you so much for, for putting this together. And it's great that we had the, the original um, board of directors from Social Media Chicago all here to, today. <laughs> um, it was just, I mean, it's been so long, I think since we've all been together, I've stayed in touch with all of you, but <laughs> just to see everybody together, it was it was very special. And um, and then to get to meet some, some new people that I hope will reach out and connect with me outside of this, I think is, uh, is just a wonderful event. So thank you, Caroline, for, uh, for helping put it on and, and making it happen. Can we get one more big group selfie? Yeah. If you're if you're out there, can you turn your video on real quick, please? Please, please, please. I'll give you a couple seconds. Three, two, one. I'm waiting. Well, we'll do more. Hold your smiles. Oh yeah, you guys are so good at this. Love it. Yes. Thank you. Jeff Steuben Willinger. There he is. <laughs> Tim, love you. Uh, Caroline, Barb, Chris, and Christy, everybody that came tonight, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, let's do this in person soon, huh? Yes. Love that. <laughs> well, yes. coming to uh, soon. So, love yes. you guys. Great seeing everybody. Take care. Oh, Great seeing everybody. Love you, Kim. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Be safe, everyone. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Tim. Oh. Love you. Thank you. Is there is there a recording of tonight that's going to be accessible oh, yes. or no? Where is where it going access? You'll hear back from Carol. I'll put that okay, on we'll video, do. probably, <laughs> but we'll send that around. That's <laughs> very kind. I would love to hear more. Thank you. Great job. Bye. Bye. Thank you.